Everyone, it's Nick with Us versus Herd. Today was a historical day, monumental day for a lot of reasons. But first, before we get into it, if you could drop me a like, drop me a comment, let me know how you've been doing. It's been a while, but I'm going to be working on getting some regular content out on YouTube. And if you want to join the UVH fam, link to the, to the Discord is below, as along with the Facebook group. But today, Biden came out swinging. And honestly, I thought it was kind of lame. And there, there were a couple there were a couple points in there that I thought, you know, actually surprised me. I was actually thinking about like, you know, also live streaming or putting out putting the video on here, but it was just like kind of like a babbling mess. So we're gonna stick to the points of what he said or what his keynote said or what his, what his uh, transcriptions were saying, and um, you know, kind of get into get kind of get into what's happening and why he is you know kind of going so hard at this. But you know, first off. I want to say that, you know, he started off saying everything about the, the, you know, Russia Ukraine war was causing and Russia is to blame and blah blah. Honestly, I mean, sure, it's spiking oil prices and everything like that, but everything that's happening right now, not entirely true that it's because of the war, right? A lot of things we were having problems before, but when things go wrong, it really amplifies it, right? Um, so, kind of get into there. I mean, I mean. We're coming off things of saying like you know food's gonna get bad you know people are gonna go hungry I mean it's this is gonna be this is gonna be an interesting time but first you know in terms of oil something that they've never done before they're going to release a million dollars uh, one not one million dollars one million million barrels of oil per day from the reserves now this has never been done before and they're gonna do it over the next six months so for six months they're gonna release all this supply into the market one. It's going to cut down our reserves by one third, right? So the the reserves, United States reserves, are going to be you know going to lose a third of its supply during this. Now, is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Is it is it? And I was kind of thinking like, okay, well, you're doing this for some short term gains. You know, obviously, you want people to not to feel a little bit of relief at the pump, but. How is this going to hurt us? Like, do we need that oil? Are we going to need that oil? Like, will we need it for any wars? Will we need it for just any reason? You know, a lot, a lot, a lot of things are going on right now. And when you dip into the reserves, I'm kind of thinking like, you know, down the line, it, c it could cause some issues. And I was kind of thinking like something like that could, you know, we, we would maybe need that oil for some some point in time. But what he is trying to do, um, he is going to, and he, and he, um, you know, it says it, and it's at the very end. It's kind of interesting. It's very at the very end of the the article here, where he's talking about people that had or or, or companies that are sitting on idle wells that they're not using. So obviously, you know, oil is a supply and demand market. They can they can up capacity, they can lower capacity um, as long as they make a profit. So they always are playing away around around with that. Same with like you know. You know the Middle East. They could turn the tap up all the way up, or they could turn it down, or whatever to kind of to kind of gauge what supply and demand is. If they don't they don't want too much supply because then the price goes way down, they can't make any money. Now they 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 don't want they don't want too little supply because then the government is going to be harping on them because there's too little supply and the spike the 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 you know oil spiking through the roof, right? And we people can't people can't afford that. But basically basically what he said is says companies that are producing from their leased, I'm, I'm reading off right here, companies that are producing from their leased acres and existing well, wells will not face higher fees, but companies that continue to sit on non-producing acres will have to choose, will have to choose whether to start producing or pay a fee for each idled well and unused acre, right? So what he, you know, what he's trying to do is say, hey, if you're not going to produce oil out of that well, which this I didn't see coming. I didn't think he was. I thought he was just gonna say, "Yeah, we're gonna release some oil out for the next six months, and you know, we'll, we'll hopefully by then we kind of figure out gas prices and oil and all that, and maybe Russia, Ukraine." But this was this is interesting to me that they're going to find companies if they're not using their wells. They, they, he's saying, "Hey, we want you to produce. We want you to produce. If you're if you're not producing, you're gonna get fined." Now I thought this was you know, kind of clever, very interesting. However, if these people are starting going to start to produce and you're releasing 1 million of barrels of oil per day, I, I, I'm thinking that may, may lead to an oversupply. And it's, it's uh, this big balancing act, right? So 
if there's an oversupply, then maybe the Middle East will cut back because they want to, you know, they want to keep things stable. You know, I'm, I know the average American would be like, yeah, yeah, as much oil as we can, but it's gonna it's gonna cause like a, an, an oversupply. Some people can't handle like because when when you have the people have to transport the oil, you have to refine the oil, you have to do all this stuff, right? And if there's too much, people there's gonna be a backlog and they can't handle all that oil, right? So I. I guess we're going to see this is going to be very 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 interesting. I mean in terms in terms of what happened to oil today, I mean it shredded up almost, you know, it was down like 6% down 6% today. Um oil was as high as 130 a few weeks ago. Now it's at sitting at 101. It did it did briefly crack under 100 today, but you know, I'll, I'll, still looking pretty bullish. We're, we're we're still looking pretty bullish right now and my bad you didn't see my screen here. <laughs> um, but yeah, oil still can pretty bullish, bullish. Like I said, dip below 100 here. So we'll see. I mean, I what, I, what I'm concerned about here is that, because they've, they've released oil from the reserves before, right? They re, re, they've released oil from, and, and really just, okay, 10 cents off for a couple of days, and now we're, we're skyrocketing, right? But now they're going to do it every day. For the next six months, they're going to release oil from, from the reserves. Now, you know where we're heading right now. I mean, I think there's a lot of fear with the the stock market, the economy. There's a lot of fear in terms of you know what's going to be happening with the yield curve inversion. You know, they're saying there's going to be a recession now. Um, you know, a hundred percent of the time, every time, every time the yield curve does invert, there is a recession. The one thing that as traders, as investors, and if you're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna short the market to oblivion, this is a for sure thing. You gotta realize that there is a high probability. I'm not gonna say a for sure thing because I mean I know it's happened 100 percent of the time, but you know, this is the stock market, things are crazy. Anything, anything can happen. It might not happen. Maybe this time it doesn't happen, but I mean, 99 percent of the time, you know, 99 percent chance it's probably gonna happen, right? Um but it could take three months, 12 months, 24 months before we're actually in a recession. So before you start buying next week puts, just realize that it may not happen like tomorrow. It may not happen next week. It could. Sure. We could We could definitely just trigger trigger this. I, you know, who knows? We, nobody knows. It could be 12 months. It could be 24 months. We don't know. So just, just be mindful as you're looking at this yield curve inversion as an indicator, I mean, everybody's looking at this, the whole world is looking at this, and you know, there, there, there's news articles saying, hey, you should worry, then there's news articles saying, hey, don't worry, there's not gonna be a recession, or there's, hey. focus on yourself, focus on your portfolio, don't worry too much about what they're doing, focus on price, what is the price telling you, right? And one of the things that was interesting to me today was NASDAQ, it's been kind of battling this, we had a, we had a, we had a, a amazing run jim kramer's like oh yeah the bottom's in blah 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 right and then there was one red day yesterday and everyone's like oh, i'm scared and then today what what i didn't like about today was that there was it, it open basically opened up below the 200 day moving average and we stayed in our here the whole time we've been fighting to get above here it briefly was up there for about a day and now we're back under here yesterday we closed below the 200 day moving average as well so I mean the, we're, we're we're still above the 50 day. However, back in back on you know March 1st there was the death cross between the 200 day and the 50 day. 50 day still way down here. 200 day still up here. 100 days right up here as well. So it's going to be interesting if if we go lower the 100 day it will cross over into a death cross on the 200 day, which I mean that's not great. Um, S and P's S and P's look way better. I mean, we're above all averages here on the S&P. I mean, it wouldn't be surprised if we if we tapped all time highs at S&P before going lower. Um, you know, maybe we're not going to go lower. Maybe we're just going to rally from here. Maybe this was just a little bit of a break because we've been, we've been rallying for two to three weeks now. You know, you just just focus on price. Keep it simple. Don't don't go crazy. Just you know, keep it keep it keep it simple. Take it a day at a time. Like for me, right now, I'm mostly day trading. I'm not really swing trading. I'm not really swing trading anything. I'm mostly f focusing on futures trading during the day and just take it, taking it easy. I mean, trading doesn't have to be stressful. It's it's on us that make it stressful, right? So hope this video was of value to you. If you watched to the end, comment, watch to the end. And as always, stay safe, stay green. It's us for a cert.